energy changes. This video will cover exothermic reactions and endothermic reactions. You will need to be familiar with the term enthalpy, and this is a term we use which means it's the heat energy of a reaction. And in particular we'll be looking at the heat energy changes. When we have a reaction that gives out heat or releases heat, we call that an exothermic reaction. Alternatively, the reaction will absorb energy, heat energy, and those are called endothermic reactions. So to emphasize, when you are explaining an exothermic reaction, you must use this term release. Okay, so exothermic reactions are ones where heat energy is being released. Now, what you'll find with these reactions is they feel hot because they are giving out heat energy. Okay, they're releasing energy to the um, surroundings or in, if you're holding the test tube, the surroundings will be your hand. So this is a good example. If you've got your hand around this test tube and you've put magnesium, metal and hydrochloric acid for the reaction, you will begin to feel it um, getting hot and that is because it is releasing energy to your hand. The alternative is an endothermic reaction and these ones absorb energy, okay, they absorb the heat energy from your hand or the surroundings. So the key word here is absorbed and these reactions will feel cold because they're absorbing the heat energy from your body. In terms of a chemical reaction we can do in the lab that is endothermic, if you have got your test tube and it's got water in it, we can put ammonium chloride crystals in. And with a few minutes, it will begin to feel very cold. Now, you don't need to remember this chemical, ammonium chloride, but it is one that we will do in the lab and you'll get to feel it get very cold, which is not particularly common. Most reactions are exothermic and so feel hot. But endothermic ones, the reason they feel cold is they are absorbing energy from your hand. So this sums up the two words that you need to be familiar with. Exothermic reactions are ones which release heat energy. Okay, They give out the heat energy so you'll feel hot. And endothermic reactions are ones which absorb energy. And so these ones will feel cold. Another way of us describing or showing endothermic and exothermic reactions is using energy profile diagrams. What you've got on the y-axis is a relative scale of energy and on the x-axis it's just the time of the reaction. So you'll always have the reactants on the left because that's where you start with and the products on the right. So this is what a exothermic reaction energy profile diagram will look like. The amount of heat energy the reactants has will always be higher than the heat energy that the products have. So this shows that the heat energy has dropped. As a result, if we were to look at the energy change, the heat energy change, the enthalpy change, it will be a negative value. So that is something you will need to memorize, that whenever the enthalpy change, the delta H, is negative, that indicates the reaction is exothermic because it has released that heat energy. Endothermic reactions are the opposite. If we look at the reactance energy level, it is lower compared to the product heat energy. And so these ones are reactions that have absorbed heat energy and so the products have more heat energy because it's been absorbed. Remember, although it's absorbing the heat energy, you will get, it will feel cold because you've lost the energy into the chemicals. These ones are going to have a enthalpy change, a delta H value that is positive. So side by side, this sums up exothermic reactions are ones which release heat energy, and so they have a negative delta H, and endothermic reactions are ones which have absorbed heat energy, 
so their delta H will be positive. This is a summary of exothermic reactions and what I've told you so far. They, exothermic reactions is where heat is released. And so if you were to put a temperature a thermometer in the um, test tube, you'll see a temperature increase. In the next video, I'll explain that this is because you've got making bonds. Some common examples you should be familiar with are combustion reactions. They all give out heat. Respiration, which is us breathing, um, exercising. Okay, we give out heat. And the delta H is always negative in this instance. Endothermic reactions are ones that absorb energy. Okay, they absorb the heat energy. So the temperature will decrease. These are ones where you've got bonds being broken. And a common example, but don't need to memorize it, is ammonium chloride and water. Other common examples which you must be familiar with is photosynthesis. Remember these ones absorb heat energy. And melting, these are ones, again, they absorb heat energy in order for the solid to go to a liquid. And boiling, these absorb heat energy to go from liquid to gas. And the delta H is always positive. See you in the next video.